So this is 4.2 subspaces. We'll start off with the definition. Okay, so if W is a subset of V and W, the smaller set, is a vector space, well, then we can call W a subspace of V. So just so you know, though, this is the symbol for subset. W is the smaller set. It's inside V. Also, V is called the parent space. We went over a list of parent spaces in the last video. You might want to review. So here's an example. Okay, so here we have our parent space of the continuous functions from A to B on the interval A to B. So W is going to be a subset of the continuous functions, and it has the property that the endpoints are equal to zero when you plug it into the function. So if you have a function and the endpoints are zero, both of them, then you're in the set of W. So W is a subset of the parent space continuous functions from A to B. So let's show W is a vector space. We start with closure, F and G be an element of W. And let's show our first case. Is F plus G an element of W? And so what we need to do is add the two functions. So F plus G will be in W if both this is zero and F plus G of B is zero. So let's work out this one first. We know we're allowed to do this because you can, this is just the definition of adding two functions. Since we know both F and G are in W, that means f of a is 0, and also g of a is 0. That's the definition of being in w. So that's 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. So we have our first condition. The first endpoint is 0 when you plug it in. The last endpoint is going to look the same. Again, this is given to be 0. This is given to be 0 because it's in the set of w. They were both given to be in W, so therefore the sum is zero. So it is closed under addition since F plus G is an element of W. Second condition of closure is scalar multiplication. So we choose K to be in the real numbers, any real number, and we'll just use FF, F of X f in w, just like above there. So k times f of a is k times 0. Since f is in w, that's given. We know any constant times 0 is 0. Again, f of b is 0. So therefore, k times 0 is 0. So this does meet the criteria that both endpoints are zero. Therefore, k f of x is in w. Therefore, closed under scalar multiplication. So question before we go on. What about, what about the other eight axioms? Well, w is a subset of all continuous functions, which is a parent set. So we don't need to show all the other axioms because of that. I'll write that out. So since W is a subset of a parent space, that means all the elements in W will satisfy all the axioms, i.e., let me write that out, So we don't need to show it. So this brings us to our subspace theorem. 
How about if I just say V is a parent space? Okay, so it basically says if V is a parent space, V is the parent space, it's the bigger set, and W is a subset, again, that's our notation for subset, then W is a subspace if and only if W satisfies the two closure properties. So you have to show that it satisfies both closure properties, and then you can say it's a subspace. Let's do another example. Okay, so A is an M by N matrix, and if our W is the vector X, which is in RN, such that A times X, again, this is my X right here. This is my X in my W. So if AX equals zero, then W is a homogeneous subspace of RN. Again, it's homogeneous subspace because of that zero. So our note here is that W is a subset of RN, which is my parent space, that's my V. So just to, so you can see it, if we have AX equals zero, we have an M by N, and then we have to have an N by one, it's a column vector, and then we get our M by one column vectors of zeros. So we can see here, X is an element of our N, okay? It's a subspace. So therefore W is a subset of our N. Okay, since it's a subspace of a parent space, all we need to show are the two closure properties. So let's start with the first one. So our first one's addition. So we let two elements, x1, x2, b, n, or w. So let's look at the addition. We can distribute. We have the properties of matrices. We know this is zero, and we know this is zero. So therefore, the sum is zero. Therefore, x1 plus x2 is an element of w. Therefore, it's closed under addition. Okay, now let's look at our second one. Scalar multiplication. We plug in there kx. And we know the k can come out because it's a constant. This is zero, so it's k times zero which is zero, therefore kx is an element of w. Therefore, it's closed under scalar multiplication. Therefore, both closure properties are satisfied. And I've already mentioned this, but I'll say it again. W is a subset of a parent space. W is a sub space of Rn. And that's our solution. So I'm just going to show you the difference. So here's a set W that's made up of ordered pairs. So that tells you right off the bat, since W is an ordered pair, it's a subset of Rn. Again, that is subset. Let's draw the picture. Here's Rn, and x is greater than zero, but at the same time, y is less than zero. This is quadrant four, so that's a subset. W is a subset. But we've already know this is a counter example to being not being a vector space, so it's not a subspace. W is not a subspace since it's not closed under multiplication, scalar multiplication. And I'll show you a counterexample to show you that. We've already seen this example in the last um, video. Similar subset. If k is a negative one, and we pick a 3 minus 2 in quadrant, well, subset of w, quadrant 4, same thing. It should be closed under scalar multiplication if you can multiply any scalar and it remains in that set. But that is clearly not an element of W. That's in quadrant 2, not 4. 
Okay, so there's a counter example to show you that W is not a subspace. It is not closed under scalar multiplication. Okay, good. Have a nice day.